So I wanted to talk about something um, interesting. There was an ayah that I wanted to live with today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ رَهِينَ Every soul is a hostage to the actions that it does and what it attains and what it accrues, right? We're all what? What did Allah use? He used the word rahina. Rahina means a hostage. Meaning whatever you do, the moment you do it, you become a hostage to the action that you did. You become a hostage to the action that you did. And there's no story, subhanAllah, you know how sometimes you read something and uh, something yani, from your past comes up. There was a story that came to my mind when I read this ayah. And that story is from, you know, back in the day, more than 10 years ago, I was, I was in a job. I was an en a civil engineer at the time. And I'm still a civil engineer, but I'm not practicing it. But that was my first job as a civil engineer. It was, a jo it was like a bridge, uh, New York City. And I had to go do like a, a pre-construction inspection, make sure everything's okay outside in the site. And you know, New York City, under the bridges, what do you find? There's certain things that you see under the bridges. There's graffiti, and sometimes there's people that are homeless, and so on and so forth. So I had to go and disturb their, their pleasant lives, tell them, guys, you got to relocate because we're tearing this bridge down, and we need to build another one, right? So I was going, and I saw, I saw something shaking in the bushes, and I'm like, what is this? what's going on? Because, you know, it was like kind of dark and gloomy. SubhanAllah, the city is one thing on top of the bridge, but under the bridge, it's a whole different beast. Right? i never seen anything like it. So I went under there, and I see the bushes shaking, and I'm like, what is going on? Who is... Is that a person in there? Is that like a... I know, I thought it was like a, a, a dog or something. And subhanAllah, a person comes out when I get close. I'm like, hey, anybody there? Some dude just jumps up, and... You know, he just starts running. <laughs> and then he comes back. I find him the next day in the same place. I'm like, hey, what's your name? You know, he told me his name, I forgot. I think it was like David or something. You know, uh, he looked like a mid-aged guy, about 45 years old, so on. But from the way he looked, he was all scruffy, looked like he's been sleeping in the streets for like a year, doesn't smell good, very raggedy clothes. And when I looked at his arms, he had like, you know, those puffy veins and stuff like that. It looked like he had surgery and cuts all over his arms and stuff. Um, and I'm like, man, this guy doesn't look right. I'm like, hey, David. So I sat down, you know, I was there and, you know, I'm like, man, well, what do you do out here? He's like, oh, this is my home. And I'm looking around, I'm like, where? He's like, that. I'm like, you mean the electric room under the bridge? I'm like, that's locked. Only the city has the keys today. He's like, no, no, we open. <laughs> we open it. We've been sleeping there for years. I'm like, okay. That's cool, that's fine, but we got to change that up now because we're about to move in a lot of heavy equipment. So uh, I'm like, but what's your story, man? You seem like a pretty decent guy. Like he was talking uh, normal and, uh, you know, he kept scratching and acting weird and twitchy sometimes. But, but he was for the most part, yeah, and his brain was working fine, right? So I, I told him, how do you make a living? He's like, well... I'm like, you're a pretty smart guy. What do you do to make a living? He's like, you know, I just beg. I hold one of those signs up um, and people donate. But I get creative with it. I'm like, how creative do you get? Like, how much can you possibly make collecting change? He's like, no. He said, you know, when you guys, you're off on weekends. I'm like, yeah. He said, I use your cones to make lane closures. So he would close two lanes coming out of the George Washington Bridge going into New York, right? You know, the Cross Bronx Expressway for those New Yorkers out here. He would literally close two lanes out of a three-lane park uh, highway, and then he'd stand there at the bottleneck and put a sign up, like a very creative sign. Donate, you know, I need it, like some, something funny. And people would actually donate. So he'll create the traffic, 
and he'll get, I'm like, I'm like, how much do you possibly make doing this? And he told me I make about $200 a day on average. And on weekends, when there's a Yankees game, I make 450. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this guy's like, this is, I'm telling you, this is back in like 2010, 11. So I'm like, man, David, you're pretty creative. So that brain is not going to waste. You're actually using it, but not the right way. Because I'm always wondering where these cones go when we come back the next week. So, Al-Muhim, just the point of the story, I told him, what do you do with all that money? He said, I spend all of it on one thing and one thing only. I'm like, what? He said, see those needles that you find on the floor here? That's all, I just keep injecting myself with this stuff. It's like morphine, heroin, whatever it is. I don't want to mention like the stuff, but he has his own little, you know, laboratory where he makes this stuff, right? Him and his little buddies. So, and he would, he would basically inject himself. And I, I told him, where do you put this stuff? And look, he's like, well, I started with this arm and then the vein bursted and I was gushing blood. I started with this arm and then I started putting it in my, the, the back of my knee behind, you know, my legs and stuff like that. And he showed me everything. I'm like, man, you look so, that's disgusting. Why would you do this? He's like, you know, looking back at it, I only can change one thing. I'm like, what is it? He's like, that first time I, I actually accepted to take this. He's like, that's the only time he actually had a choice. After that, he never had a choice again. He said it was just rolling down the hill. He said, but that first time, he had a, a friend that told him, hey man, you want to relax, you want to, you know, you feel a little stressed. Hey, try this stuff, that they give it in the, in the hospitals and so on. So just check it out. He's like, nah man, he kept brushing it off. He tried it, boom, boom, one thing led to another. Every week, it became twice a week, three times a week. Fired from his job, his life ended. His wife and kids kicked him out of the house because they couldn't put up with him anymore. He had a decent life. He was a professional. He worked as an arbor. He would like cut trees and... You know, like, like big trees go to Canada, big forests, and he was a professional tree cutter, right? And he had a degree for it. And he made good amounts of money, all gone. He's like, now I live on the street. And it's been like that for God knows how many years, like 10 years or something. But the only choice he had was what he said. He's like, that first time was when he had the most strength to say no. And every time after that, he had less and less of a choice. It was more of like something I have to do. So I wanna tell everyone today that we are all hostage for the actions that we do. This man, he could not free himself from the decisions he made because the decisions he made dictated the life that he's leading at that time, that he was leading. Because the decisions that you make dictate the life that you lead. They force a particular future on you. You may not like that future, you may not see that future, but the future is inevitable if you make that choice for yourself. Whether we choose to get on a website and watch things that are inappropriate, whether we choose to go to places where we do things or, or see things that are inappropriate, that are haram, whether we decide to chill with people that remind us of haram, get us away from Allah, we are going to be a hostage of that decision. I get a phone call. This person's calling me. I know he's gonna backbite and slander. I know he's gonna ask me to do something haram. I know this person's gonna, gonna, gonna remind me of, some, of my past that I'm trying to forget. Do I swipe and accept the call? Or do I end the call and reject it? Whose decision is that? That's my decision. But you know what? If that slight moment I decide to pick up, hey, what's up? That's it. I made the decision. I am a hostage to this decision now. Whatever happens in that call, whatever sin, whatever it leads up to, I have to pay for with my life and my whole trajectory is gonna change based on that. I want the younger brothers and sisters in the crowd to understand this because they have a lot more to lose. Brothers, sisters, like if I draw a line from here, up here, let's assume this is age zero 
and this is age 80, okay? I'm gonna start from zero. Here, you're about 15, okay? You make a slight, you break off on a slight tangent. Just a millis, uh, like a, a, a fraction of a millimeter. By the time you're 80, it's gonna be a, a, a six inch difference in where your life could have been from where it is, right? So uh, somebody at a young age making these decisions, they have a lot more to lose and it'll affect their trajectory a lot more than it will somebody who's closer to the, the end of their life. Correct or no? So before we engage in anything, we need to start thinking a lot about the decisions that we're about to make. Before I do anything, before I talk to a person, before I accept a job, right now you guys are young, okay? You could, you could do anything, you got two jobs. One job is at a startup company, some tech company, and another job is at a bank. They pay two whopping dollars per hour more, a whopping two dollars, right? And you're like, man, which job do I accept? This job at the bank? or this job at the startup where I'm doing some other tech stuff. And you know, if you get into the bank, you're going to be forced to that. The rest of you, it's very likely, you could change your career, you could do anything after, but this is the experience that you're accumulating. Whatever decision that you make, you will be a hostage. It's always gonna be in your resume. It's always gonna be in your track record. It's always gonna be in your experience. You decide to engage in a relationship that is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You pick up, someone shoots you a message, and you know, I shouldn't be messaging this person. But I choose to, to listen and send a message back. Yeah, hey, what's up? You're a hostage to that. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ رَهِينَةٍ so brothers and sisters, the point of this whole thing is to start to weigh our actions like they are going to reflect on all of our lives, because they are. And start looking at our actions as if we are going to be captives of them. Okay? Because that's what Allah told us we're going to be. If you're going to be held hostage and you had a choice between this and that, who would you want to be a hostage with? That's basically the choice that we need to make. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and to guide us to the straight path, to guide us away from haram and to show us the truth and to protect our children. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaykum. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما